Alright, what's going on everyone? My name is John and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be covering 10 different VS Code extensions that you should be using to increase your productivity and just make your life a little bit easier. So the first extension we have is called Code Spell Checker by Streetside Software. And what this extension allows us to do is catch grammatical errors that we have inside of our code. And it works with HTML files, CSS files, and also JavaScript files. So let's take a look at how it works here. So within my markup or my HTML file, I have this title tag. And as we can see, I spelled a word wrong. And we can see that because it actually underlines the word in this little blue squiggly here. So if we click on the word we misspelled, we get this little light bulb here and it's going to give us a list of options for what it thinks we're trying to spell. So in our case here, elegant is spelled incorrectly and we can see the correct spelling right here so we can correct that. So we'll save that. Now let's take a look at something within our style sheet here. So once again, I have spelled a class name wrong here. So I spelled display wrong and the same thing here. We get the blue squiggly. We can click on the light bulb here and we can correct that. Now, one cool thing about this extension is within our JavaScript, we commonly do uh, camel casing for function names. And you can see here, it actually works with camel casing. So in my case, for the function called validate input, I spelled input wrong. So if I click on this here and go to the light bulb, we can correct that as well. So it's really cool that it works with camel casing because this is very common, a very common thing that we do within our JavaScript files. And then it also works for comments here the same way. So you can see here I spelled remove wrong. We can click on the light bulb and we can correct that. Now, next we have this extension called Code Snap, which I recently just found and allows you to take really awesome screenshots of your code. So let's take a look at how this works. Now, here within my JavaScript file, we have this function called validate, and maybe you want to share this with a friend. Now, before Code Snap, we may just take this whole function, copy and paste it into Slack or Microsoft Teams, which we all know is poorly formatted. It looks horrible and it's very hard to understand what we're doing uh, within that function if someone else is taking a look at it, or we could even do a screen cap but again, that can be kind of a hassle. Now with CodeSnap, how this works is we highlight the function we want to share. We do the command or we do the keybind command shift and P if you're on Mac and we can type in code here. And once you have CodeSnap installed, you can actually click here. It'll be called CodeSnap with a camera. It'll create this really awesome screenshot of the code that you have highlighted here on the right inside of a new window. So if we kind of extend this window a little bit, the really cool thing about this uh, extension is if you wanted to maybe make this a little bit uh, less wide, we can do that or we can kind of customize the screenshot to however we want. Now, once we're ready to share this, we click on the icon here, the code snap icon, and we can save this to our desktop. So next we have this extension called Color Highlight, which simply just highlights web colors within our editor. So within my style sheet here, you can see that I have a few different properties where we're defining a color here. So I have a background color property on my body and also a background color property on my Sinoform. And what you may notice is that the value of that particular property, which is a color, um, is actually being wrapped in this tag here. And the background color of that tag is the value being defined on that specific property. So say for example here, we type in a new color, we do this purple, now we have that tag with the background color of the actual value being defined here. Now what this extension does is just give us a better visualization as to what color we're defining as opposed to the small little square we usually get within VS Code by default. All right, the next extension that we have is called ENV CMD file syntax. And what this extension does is highlight the key value of your environment variable that you define inside of your ENV file. Now, by default, this is what you get when you define your environment variables here. Now, disregard the fact that I just copied and pasted the same one down eight different times here, but I just want to show you for an example here. So as you can see, this is kind of hard to distinguish the actual name of the actual variable and then the value of your env variable and right now i have this extension disabled so you can see what it looks like by default now if we enable it here what it does is it just highlights the key so that it's easier to distinguish the actual name of the key and then the value here 
So next we have an extension called Live Server. And I'm sure many of you watching this video right now have already heard about this extension. And the reason why I still want to include it within my list is for any new programmers that may be watching this video. So what Live Server essentially does is it launches a local development server on your PC with this live reload feature for static and dynamic pages, meaning we can make changes to our HTML or our markup here or our styles, and they're going to automatically update within the browser. Browser. So let's take a look at how this works. So let's open up our file tree here. And what we want to do is we want to right click on our index.html file here and we have this option to open it up with live server here. So if we do that, we get our project opened up here within our browser. So now, for example, within our markup here, let's say we want to alter our heading here. We'll say create new account. And as soon as we save that and head over to our browser, we can now see that change is reflected within this, um, this browser tab here. We don't need to do any refreshing for us to see that change. And it also works with our styles here. So for example, in our style sheet, if we want to change the background color, let's do this purple color again. If we uh, change that, save it, you can now see that it also updates our styles without us having to do any refreshing. Now, next we have an extension called Prettier, which I'm going to assume that many of you guys watching this video have already heard about. But once again, I want to include within my list here for any new programmers that may be watching this video. So Prettier simply put is a code formatter that's going to take our code and format in a very clean and organized way, just as you're seeing right here. So Prettier works for your HTML files, your JavaScript files, as well as your style sheets, and it also works for a whole bunch of other different file types as well. But we're going to focus in and show you how Prettier works within your HTML file here. So for example, let's create a new div here. And then inside of this div, let's create a paragraph tag. And we're going to add some lorem in here. So we'll say lorem, and we'll do a significant amount here. We'll say 100. So right away, when we add that, you see that we get this word wrapping here. It goes on to the next line automatically. And this is actually not a part of Prettier. Well, it sort of is once you save it, but what you're seeing happen here is actually a setting within VS Code I definitely recommend using alongside Prettier, and it's called Word Wrap here. So for example, if I turn this off here, we go back. Now we have this one long continuous line here, which looks really bad, and it can become really annoying to scroll all the way to the end here to find the end. But Prettier actually does solve this when you save it. So once we save it here, it's going to auto format it for us, which is one really good thing about Prettier. But what happens is if we turn this on, we never have to worry about saving it before we actually have the formatting. But as you can see, we still have our paragraph tag here in line with our text and the same thing uh, at the end here where the text is still in line with our ending paragraph tag. So when we save it here, what Prettier is going to do is actually format our code to how it should look here. So as you can see now, our code looks a lot better. And that is what Prettier is going to do. It's going to format our code to make it look a lot more clean and organized. So next we have an extension called Quokka, which is often referred to as the JavaScript playground inside of your editor. So we're going to take a look at one of the main features of Quokka, which is the live code execution. Now I do want to mention that there is a decent amount of other features that come along with Quokka, but we're only going to be covering this one. And there is also a pro version that will enable some additional features for you. So to begin using Quokka within our JavaScript file here, we want to do the key bind of command shift and P and we want to start typing out Quokka here. And as you can see, we get a whole bunch of different results here. So the one that we want is going to be start on current file here. And as you can see, this terminal is going to pop up and you can see some stuff happen here. We now have these green boxes here. And then we can see that Quokka is now running here within our file. So we can close out this little terminal. So to demonstrate how this live code execution works, I have a few different examples here we're going to run through. So we had this array of numbers here stored in this variable numbers, and maybe we want to create a new array that's called map, but we want to alter that array. We want to take the number and multiply it by two here. So you may want to see what that output looks like to make sure that everything is working correctly. So what you would traditionally do is a console.log. So we can say, that log here and then we would do mapped here and then we would have to go over to the browser we'd have to inspect our browser go into the console and then we would see that result but as you can see with quokka right away once we do console.log and we throw in our variable here we see the live result right inside of our javascript file here which is really cool and to show you that this is live if i change this number to like 120 you can see that's automatically going to update here 
Now, if you have no intention to actually log us out to the console, we don't even need to say console.log. We can just type out the variable here and we're going to get the same result. So pretty cool. And another example where we could use this extension is with a function. So what I've done here is I've created a sample function that's called add. It takes in a parameter of x and y and then it returns the x multiplied by the y and then we're adding two here. So what I've done is then we have this variable here called new number and we're setting it equal to the add function and we're passing in 7 and 21. So for example, if we wanted to get a peek at what this would return, instead of doing a full console.log, we can just say once again, a new number here and we'll get that value right inside of our JavaScript file. All right, so next up we have an extension called text pastry and what this does is extend the power of multiple selections within VS Code. So let me show you a great way we could use this. So say for example, inside of our markup here, we have a bunch of images that we want to display. So let me create an image tag here and then maybe it's inside of our assets folder and then we have an images folder and we'll say picture dash one dot PNG. And like I mentioned, maybe we want to display 10 different pictures here that all kind of go in the same format. It's picture one, picture two, picture three. So if we wanted to do this and change all of them, we have to come in here manually and say two, three, four, and so on, which can become very tedious. So one thing you may think of is, well, they all have the same sort of, you know, structure here. So we can select them all, come in here and we can go one, but then they all become one that's not really going to work. And this is where text paste three comes in. So with everything still selected, we'll do a command shift and P here and we'll type in text and start to say pastry and we get all these different options here. So we can add numbers in from one to X, which is from one to how many different selections you have. You can do starting from zero to how many selections you have. You can do a word list. You have the option to do letters and you can see we have a few other options here as well. But the option I want for this example is going to be numbers starting from one and going to how many different selections we have here. So if I click on this, you can see it's automatically going to add the correct number here starting from one and going all the way down to the amount of selections that we have. Okay, next we have an extension called to do highlight and like the name suggests, it's going to highlight our to do's within our comments. So let's take a look at how this works. So maybe for example, here within our markup, we want to create a new to do. So we'll say to do in all caps followed by a colon and that's going to highlight our to do here. So maybe we'll say, please add a new input like that. All right. Now with this extension, we get two other annotations that we can define here. So the next one is called a fix me. So we'll do fix me in all caps followed by colon and say, please remove this input later like that. And then the final one we have is called a work in progress. So WIP colon, and then we can say this will not stay or something like that. All right, so not only does this make our comments stand out a little bit more, but it also makes our comments smart. And what I mean by that is if we actually do a key bind of command shift and P, we can type in to do here and highlight. And we have this command that we get with this extension, which is to list all the highlighted annotations. So if we click on return here, we can list all the work in progress ones, all the to do's or all the fix me. So that way, before we do a push, we can check all of our comments or all of our to do's or fix me's and make sure that we completed them all. So if we click enter here, we can see that we get listed out every single one that we defined. Okay, so to wrap things up here for the final extension, we have VS Code icons, which isn't much of an extension as it is more of a theme for your icons within Visual Studio Code. So if we head over to our Explore tab here, what it's going to do is update all the icons here inside of our file tree. So to use our extension of VS Code icons, we want to do a command shift and P right here. And we want to look for the command of preferences colon file icon theme. And as you can see here, by default, it's set to this one right here. But if we go down to VS Code icons, it's going to update all these here. And as you can see, in my opinion, this looks a lot better than the default that comes with VS Code. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for the video here today. Hopefully you guys did learn about one new extension for VS Code. And if you did, be sure to leave a like on it down below and also drop a comment on what your favorite extension was from this video. And if you guys are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. And also, if there's any extensions that I didn't cover that you want to share with anyone watching this video, be sure to leave those as well in the comments down below. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.